What the heck, Canon? R3, now I was not going to be impressed by this camera, but then you did something that kind of impressed me, but really, really frustrates me with not only Canon, but the camera industry in general. Welcome, if you're new here, consider subscribing. I talk about this type of stuff like new camera news and as well as reviewing cameras and seeing what little tricks and stuff I can teach you when it comes to cameras specifically for video. Definitely consider subscribing, but today's little talk is about the Canon R3. Now this camera has been put in the hands of a lot of different social media personalities to test out and to really dig on the photography capabilities or the video capabilities. Now, they all had access to a pre-release body, so it's not really like review, but Gordon Lang seemed to have pretty much did a whole review on the darn camera. But for the most part, it's pre-production bodies that were in the hands of users that were talking about it. I don't have my own pre-production, of course. I don't have that type of connection, but I think after the camera launches, I might actually want to test it out for a few days, so I might request that. However, I will say that there is a frustrating thing about this new Canon R3. Now, if you don't know, Canon R3 is not the new flagship model, but it's darn close to a flagship model in the mirrorless lineup of Canon cameras. It basically trounces the 1DX Mark III, which is what Canon says is the kind of the pinnacle of their cameras. No, I'm sorry, but this Canon R3 definitely seems to outperform by specs alone and even body and capabilities trounces the 1dx mark 3 now what i'm going to talk about is the video features in particular from photos it, it's a great camera but in video features is what i care about now this camera can do 6k at up to 60 frames per second raw which is incredible it does the raw and the raw light so it's kind of a cool thing to have because i enjoy shooting 8k raw and a 6k raw file is pretty cool the 1dx mark 3 can do like 5.5k raw but since this is a 24 megapixel sensor it could do up to 6k raw this camera can also record 4k 120 just like the r5 4k 60 and 4k 24 and 30. The important thing to note that is actually pretty impressive when compared to the R5 is not just the fact that this camera, it can overheat, but it really doesn't for a lot of these different modes. 4K 120 can potentially overheat, especially if you're using the camera a lot and then you just switch to 4K 120. But the 4K 60 and in particular 4K 24 and 4K 30 do oversampled recording without overheating, which is really great. And in fact, you can go as long as I believe six hours of straight recording 4K24 that's oversampled from the 6K sensor and you get every little detail and it looks just as sharp compared to what I've seen as the oversampled 8K comparatively. If you're doing like, for example, 4K HQ on the R5, which is oversampled from 8K, and you compare it to the 4K that's oversampled from 6K, the comparisons come really close from what I've seen online. So that's pretty cool. So none of that actually frustrates me. I'll tell you what frustrates me with the camera industry in general, maybe in particular with the way Canon's handling this. One of the features for video that this camera has that the R5 does not have for no understandable reason is the R3 actually removed the 30 minute time limit for recording. And this is not a cinema camera. This is meant to be a photo camera first. It's really a hybrid camera, but it's meant to be photos first. But the R5, which is an expensive camera, still has a 30 minute time limit. And that could be removed simply by a firmware update, but Canon hasn't done it. They want you to kind of go for the more expensive camera to just get it there. And that's really what's frustrating is like Canon can easily just remove that 30 minute time limit. But at this point, they've given us a lot of other features with firmware updates. I don't see in their timeline anytime soon because they know that's something that many people wanted. And rather than just give it to you on the R5 or the R6, they're saying, hey, you know what? No, you have to buy this more expensive camera, which is unbelievable because if you think that your audience is gonna say, okay, I need unlimited recording. So instead of getting this Canon camera, I'm gonna get the more expensive Canon camera. When you have options from like Sony and Panasonic that offer unlimited recording, 
with more affordable options in their hybrid cameras. Why would somebody go to a Canon to upgrade and pay this much? Why not give it to the R5 and the R6? Unlimited recording. There's no reason that they don't have it. And that's what really what frustrates me is that they just kind of give you these features that are pretty standard for their competitors, but then they charge you this exorbitant amount of money just to get a pretty basic feature as unlimited recording, which, is, which quite honestly, I think that's completely unnecessary and they do it anyway. I mean, the R3 itself, what, one of the features that does actually have me excited besides the unlimited recording is the fact that it can do 60 frames per second in 6K. That's something that, that you really don't hear too often. Sure, this is an expensive camera, but actually pushing the envelope of internal raw recording at 60 frames per second means that, oh man, you're gonna be pushing a lot of data through that CF Express card. I wish it had two, but one is fine. We'll deal with one. All in all, th this camera body, is it something that I would get? No, not, not at all. And it's because it's overpriced for some slightly better features in some extent to the R5. And the R5 in itself, I'll deal with the 30 minute time limit. I'll deal with the slight overheating. I have been dealing with it. And I honestly, neither has been a real issue for me. And should I need to do a long recording, I'm not gonna be recording in RAW anyway. Like I said, I usually have multiple cameras so I can start and stop one and just cut angles on each camera and it would be just fine. So not an issue there. But it's a pretty frustrating that Canon does this in general. It's really not necessary. And if Canon releases a firmware update for the R5 and R6 that removes that time limit of 30 minutes, then, I mean, it's great. Some would say, well, what's the point? Because it's going to overheat by then anyway. So it's the same thing. And, and I say, no, you could record 1080 or you can record 4K standard on the R5 and just let us record to our heart's content what why it just it just doesn't make any sense to me other than a marketing trick to get you to purchase that little bit more expensive camera and then the other frustrating thing and this is kind of the last thing that i'll mention is the r3 is not the flagship camera because they want to soup you up for the r1 why the heck are you releasing this camera the way it is then and it's because they want to give you a camera that's priced at six thousand dollars and then release an r1 for like eight thousand dollars and really kind of find a way to get that money from you but then the r1 itself is probably going to be launched sooner rather than later but then when it does launch it's probably going to make everyone who bought the r3 gonna be like huh well now i want the r1 just like this camera is trying to get everyone who bought the r5 like huh well now i want the r3 it makes sense from a business standpoint to keep your camera fans just buying the, the next camera that's more expensive, but a feature that's actually pretty common in most cameras and they're charging you an extra thousand or two thousand dollar tax, like a basic feature tax. I think that's just not fair. All in all, I think the R3 is an amazing potential video camera in itself that you can get a lot done with and actually worry about overheating a lot less than than probably the r5 but to me i still think that getting the r5 and maybe an atomos ninja v plus where you can get 8k without overheating or 4k hq without overheating then it's almost like what's the point i don't see it but from a photography perspective i can see why you'd want this camera but then there's that added confusion of should we get this or just wait for the r1 if it were me, if I was into photos, especially for sports photography, I'd either get the Sony A1 or wait and get the R1 if and when it's launched. I wouldn't bother with the R3 if I was a photographer. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about the R3. Is it something that interests you? And how do you feel about what I said? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.